Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. I have received quite a few requests um, to do some more watercolor crayon tutorials. And um, actually another couple just came in this last week on a very old video, video from about a year ago, I guess it's not really that old, um, to do a watercolor crayon or watercolor pastel uh, video. So I thought, hey, why, why not? Let's make a chicken. Um, chicken's very... <laughs> dramatic animals with a lot of personalities. So I figured out ah, what the heck. So we're going to paint this today with watercolor crayons and um, I'm going to paint the background here and then I am going to um, I'm going to go in and uh, show you how to draw it. But first I just want to get this background done so it will be dry. I'm going to grab some uh, sepia. Is this sepia or charcoal? Yeah, sepia. Just throwing it in the background area. Uh, some yellow ochre basically just want to tone my paper because I don't really like to use watercolor crayons on a stark white. I like to get some color in there right off the bat. Maybe a little bit of this charcoal gray. Just uh, there we go. And just with a, a flat brush, just going to liquefy this. And this uh, yellow ochre is actually coming up out of the chicken body to kind of tone it. And I could actually probably use a tougher stiffer brush to help liquefy this paint a little bit, but I just basically want to get um, something on the paper so it's just not bright white. I like to have a little bit more uh, texture and whatnot in my background. And you can uh, kind of brush it on over stuff as long as it's not supposed to be stark white, which really this isn't, so you can kind of brush it in onto the bird as well. Um, I'll show you how to draw this in a moment, so don't freak out if you're kind of like, but I don't know how to draw that yet! Lindsay, slow down! We'll get to that. So basically we're just toning it. You can make sure you get all your scribbles out or you can leave some of those uh, raw crayon marks in. It's completely up to you. I do want a little bit more dark around the um, around the beaks that will stand out a little bit more. So I'm just kind of scribbling it off on my cutting mat so I have a little bit of a... Whoop, went over the beak there. That wasn't what I wanted to do. Let's scribble that out. See, that's that's great. You can always uh, lift it up if you make a mistake. You can lift that right out of there. I just got a bunch of glitter on my picture and some red. Look at that. It's always an adventure. Yes, I should probably get a clean paper towel <laughs> before I begin, huh? There's an idea. I'm not going to worry about it. See, we're just going to go with the flow. I know I'm going to be using a color uh, red in this, so I'm not going to worry about it. Let's scribble that a little bit more. Out with that, I'll just bring that color in. All right, now I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to show you how to draw a chicken. Scrap paper here. And to draw our chicken, I'm going to use a dark, I'll just use one of these crayons here. Um, I'm going to start with the beak. Generally, I start with basic shapes, but this is kind of a uh, stylized thing. I'm going to get the eyeball in there. Going to get the uh, comb. I usually just draw with really light pressure and a pencil so I can uh, um, erase it if I need to. Get the shape of the body in there. And get the uh, waddle or whatever that's called. I don't know what that's called on a chicken. I ought to know. I have chickens. And yet I don't. Get that other red thing in there. And just get some of the definition of where I'm going to break up the colors. And that's really, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all you need. Um, you just need a, just a, a guide for where your crayon's going to go. So there, pause it if you need to. And let's get on with the painting of our bird. All right, I'm going to go dry this with a heat gun because it's still pretty wet. Be right back. We are dry. Love the heat gun. It does such a great job at drying that up quick. I've got a little uh, ruby red here. And, you know, a different um, brands of watercolor crayons will have different names. You just go ahead with the closest bright red color you have. Not a big deal. It's not exactly the same. Now, I have a set of 84 watercolor crayons, but I generally will use less than 10 on a painting, even a big painting, because I, um, I like to have color harmony. And if you add too much, um, too many colors, you don't get the harmony. So I'm coloring in this. <laughs> to be named later thing, the waddle or whatever that's called on our on our bird. 
And uh, then I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit of uh, shadow in here with this darker red. This is called Indian, Indian Red? Yep. Indian Red. And just want a little bit of the, that shadow color down here. And maybe just a little bit here at the base of the comb. And the winters, we had our first a chicken winter last year. And... Uh, we had to go out and put Vaseline on their comb so they didn't get frostbite. It was crazy. Oops, I don't want that. I want the smaller brush. Um, any fairly, um, you want a fairly firm brush for these. Um, like, I wouldn't want anything longer or larger or floppier than this. I find that the small flat brushes work really well. I do like to stick with the um, these uh, nylon bristles because they don't damage my paper and they really scoop and move my pigment around well. Um, chickens can be quite ugly birds. <laughs> I don't know why I like them so much. They're so cute. They're cute in a very ugly sort of way. My chickens like to roam the town. If I'm not, they're very, very, they're people birds. Mine are anyway. And uh, when I'm out, outside, they'll be right stuck to me. They follow me all around. But, um, but if I'm not around, then they get bored and they go a uh, wandering. And I've had them chased home from several neighbors. They've been chased home by a fox before. Um, luckily we don't have too many foxes around here, or I don't think I'd have any chickens left. Um, but they're quite friendly. Yeah, but they do think the grass is always greener. I always find them in the neighbor's ditch, digging for who knows what grubs, or... I don't know. I don't know, they, they like to, uh, they like to go bother the neighbor's dogs. <laughs> they're awful! I really should keep them in their pen. I hate to, though. I like my little free-range birds. Alright. The pets, as I call them. My husband thought that they were going to be, um... They were going to be dinner. No, not going to happen. Sorry. They're just too, too special and precious. They're special and precious birds. You can have the eggs, but I don't think we're going to cook these birds because they're just, they're just my precious. They're my precious. <laughs> All right. Now what do we want to do? I think we need to let that dry. And, um, oh, actually, well, it's still what though. You can go in and actually um, add some color. You'll just get different effects. You can get some textures here. Um, you know, this, whatever this is, it's very, um, rough. It's kind of, I don't know what, how to describe it. It's kind of textured. So if you want to go in with another pastel and just kind of, this is called, um, Scraffito, just kind of like putting these kind of scumbly lines, you'll be picking up a little bit of that texture and, um, that's kind of nice. It will kind of give you a little bit of a, uh, of a lovely texture. This color is salmon, and I'm going to throw a little bit of that on the bottom of the beak, and also a little bit around the eyes, and kind of up here under the comb a little bit. And I'm just keeping a very neutral color palette. I'm going to go in with my sepia now and throw in some of these uh, these feathers. Now we use this in our background so that everything would kind of go together. Now I'm not a fan of using a pre-mixed like gray or black when I watercolor paint, but when you're using the pastel um, with the watercolor crayons, you're actually going to be going back in and using some of these marks dry. You're not always going to blend them out. So I think it's nice to have, um, you can take a little more liberty as far as the colors you use, I guess is what I'm trying to say. You know, I will use a mixed color when I'm using um, colored pencils or uh, pastels or watercolor crayons just to, uh, just because it, it aids and does not detract from my picture. But then again, I still won't go in and use 25 colors. I'll stick it to the amount of, I'll keep to the amount of colors I'm using. So these strokes are important here because some of them will remain after you're done blending. So you want to make sure that you're not just scribbling um, willy-nilly. You want to make sure that your strokes and the marks that you make are going in the direction of the, that the feathers would grow. And I'm going to throw in some of this other dark while I'm at it, this uh, charcoal. I'm using Karen Dosh brand crayons. I think they're the best. Um, I have used other brands and the they're just they're just really creamy and soft and they work really well. And um, if you had like the choice between these and gelatos, I'd go with these. If you have the choice between these and any other brand of watercolor crayon, I would go with these. These are, if you like a little more control, you might want to get a watercolor pencil, but as far as um, watercolor crayons go, I really don't think you're going to find anything better in a crayon or a pastel than the Karen Dosh here. And a little bit of yellow ochre here just to give that color a little more interest. And I think I'm going to do a little bit more of that 
blush color in here. And now we're going to go back to our brush and blend. Oh, before I do that, though, I think I want some yellow ochre and some of this uh, burnt sienna in the eyeball. Get that in right off the bat there. Okay, we don't have to worry about saving any little highlights out because we can use an X-Acto knife to scrape those. Just keep your brush strokes, too, in that same fashion. You want to be uh, flicking the brush uh, the way the, uh, in the direction of the feathers. Because really, we're doing a card. We want to, uh, we don't want, the worst thing you can do, I think, to one of these little paintings is to work it too much. You just got to stop at that point where it looks all right, it looks good, and anything you do to it after that is going to be a distraction and not um, not enhance it. And the only way to, to figure out when that is is by practice, is just to know when to let it let it be. Um, the cool thing about the watercolor crayons, with watercolor, it's almost like you kind of have to ride that roller coaster till it's done, um, because once it's dry, you've lost the opportunity to do certain things. But with the watercolor crayons, I find that you can go back in all the time and, uh, and keep working it. So, you know, you can let it sit and tomorrow look at it and say, well, I, I think I like it the way it is, or look at it tomorrow and say, well, I think I would wish I, I, I think I want to do a little bit more to it. And, and you could kind of pick up where you left off. So this makes a really nice medium for those, you know, maybe just have a couple minutes at a time to sit and create. It's great because you can come, come back to it whenever you need to, just kind of like knitting, you know, it's, it's, a, it's great for the stops and starts. I think I did a lot more of the watercolor crayon work when my children were babies because there's a lot of stops and starts then. Um, the glitter from a paper towel doesn't seem to have affected my uh, <laughs> my painting too much. A little glitter never hurt anything anyway. My color in the eyeball here. I don't want my colors to mix too much because I really like that golden look. And something else I like to do, like uh, that line on the beak that separates the top and the bottom, I want it to be quite defined, so I'm actually just going to scribble out a little bit of um, pigment onto my craft mat. I'm going to really have to hose this puppy down if I ever do any sewing down here, because it is going to get my fabric filthy. I just give, give it a wipe off like once a day. Um, and I'm going to kind of add a little bit of shadow under the uh, red thing. Anyone know what that's called? Please leave a comment. Let me know what that thing's called if you know. And I also want to give a little more dark at the base of this. And I'm going to go back in with my crayons because I want to build kind of a thickness. And I want this to feel kind of three-dimensional and thick. So I'm going in with my pastel or crayon, whatever you want to call it again. I generally don't sharpen uh, my pastels. I'm more likely to color on a bunch and push it with my brush. But if I do need to sharpen it, I sharpen it over a palette. Um, with wells in it so I can use that paint later because I don't these are expensive you don't want to waste them um, I got a heck of a deal when I got mine but it was gosh it was over 10 years ago and because um, I know because I, I bought these before I had children and my oldest is almost 11 um, and I got the set of 84 for like 64 bucks and I've never seen it that low now they're like a hundred and 80 at the cheapest sites for the set of 84 so you don't want to you don't want this to go to waste they will last you a long time I'm using my you know those pen those crayons that I bought you know 12 13 years ago but um you know so they will last you they're high quality materials but still they're they're an investment and you want to make sure that you get your money's worth and what I kind of like is that the watercolor crayons don't absorb into your paper like traditional watercolors do. So you can actually kind of sculpt and push it around and refine your edges as you go. All right, I want to um, bring in some of those wispy hairs right above here. I can look at my uh, first one there. We're gonna do that with an X-Acto knife. All right, where's my X-Acto knife? Over here, of course, over at my other place where I could sit and paint and watch TV, <laughs> my little, uh, my little bench. And remember, less is more. We're just scraping out some of those uh, some of those lines. I'm gonna do some of that under the the chin too. And um, I think I want to have some little some darker little furs over here. Those little teeny little feathers that look kind of furish. So I'm gonna color it first in with my charcoal crayon. Use the colors that you have, as long as you keep, as long as you pick a, like a variety of, I don't know, seven colors or so, 
um, and you keep reusing those same colors, you're not going to have discord. It doesn't have to be the exact same colors I use. Just, you know, get a few that are going to work good for this project. Really, I think value is more important than color. Value is kind of like how light or dark something is. If you have your value, values right, you could do this picture in neon colors and it's going to look good because you're going to view value right. I felt like I needed a little bit more definition in there. You know, and uh, I'm painting upside down. So sometimes that's easier to kind of see what you're doing because you're not like, you're just um, looking at the whole composition rather than looking at um, whether you're painting a chicken, you're, it's more like, well, does this composition balance? Um, is it working? You know, it's not like I'm painting a chicken, it's like I'm painting, I'm making an abstract painting and I'm just hoping my composition will work out. I'm using just some white uh, on its own just to kind of pull out some of the uh, the definition. Now I remember this, I had a little underturn there, I'm going to see if I can pull that back. Bring that back in there. I don't know if I can, I might have already that ship might have sailed. No, oh, there it is. I think I can bring that back. And I feel like I need a little bit more depth to this, so a little more depth of color. And I'm keeping kind of choppy lines because I want it to um, I want it to be thick and and feel substantial. So, you know, watercolor crayons, if you, I've never used the Stampin' Up! ones, though, but if you have those, if you already have some, use what you have. I'm turning this sideways so I can get a better angle for what I'm, what I'm painting. That's fine. I, I usually do kind of clip my work to a board and, um, and work it from different angles. I want to color in my pupil while I'm at it here. This is the dark charcoal. And I think I'm going to dig out my highlights for the eye. Scraping it back to the white of the paper. Even though I have a white pencil, it's just not going to stand out as well as scraping it back. And just a little bit of definition around the eye. And I can do any other little hairs that I want to. I think I want to use, sometimes I have to scribble off my white because it gets kind of dirty. I want to add, I got some pink on there. I'll just wipe it off my fingers. Um, I want to add some white to the beak. And I think I'll do a little yellow ochre, but here's another tip. You can use your paintbrush. You pick the color up from the tip of your um, of your pastel stick or your crayon just to um, so that you don't get over, you don't get too much color. I just want to just slightly tint that. And I can throw in a little bit more of that yellow here and there. And really that's about it. You know, I could sit and work this for a little bit more, and maybe I will, but for the sake of this video, I think that uh, that's pretty good. Maybe just throw in a few little hand-painted hairs. Remember, your job is just to, um, to kind of hint at, at what you're drawing. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. We have cameras for that. Go in and have fun with it and just put what you think needs to be there. I could use a smaller brush for that too, but oh well. This will be fine. Any little details will help. So there you have it. It is a chicken in watercolor crayons. I want to thank you so much for watching, and if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and you won't miss another video. Um, well, that's it for me today. Happy crafting!